It's very tight-knit, very small units of action. You get to know everybody. You get really personally involved in their lives. You get to watch guys on and off as you move back and forth, just grow tremendously. Once you have the badge on your chest, you're part of a brotherhood, and it's a very, very tight brotherhood. I mean, just that inherent level of trust that you're putting in somebody is, is, is the thing that I always wanted to be around. Well, Navy OD, the simple answer is that we uh, go ahead and defuse any type of explosive anywhere, anytime. So when you say, well, what do you do for a living? I, I parachute. I'm like, okay, parachuting is just a way for me to get to an ordnance prom. What do you do? I'm a diver. Okay, well, that's great, but I dive as a way to get to an ordnance prom, and that's when my job begins. When something bad happens, then you come back and you train to that exact thing. They'll go out there, put guys in the water, and then guys will come up with symptoms, or they won't come up, or their line will get cut. So all of these things that have happened in the real world. Well, that was a natural jump from that point to go ahead and go to other mobility skills. And so we were some of the first ones that learned how to also parachute so we could integrate with special forces. And we learned how to shoot weapons and go ahead and you do small unit tactics so we could integrate with those forces. Well, once you do that type of stuff, it kind of builds an ethos. If you're dedicated and you want to get through, you'll stay every night after and, and do night study. You'll come in on Sunday and study all day. And um, you, you have to want it. So it's a, definitely a team effort. And you have to have that bond with each other, just pull each other through. You want that type of character, somebody that falls off the horse and can come back on. You can't be a guy that's out of shape and isn't good at running or wants to sit in the truck all the time. You got to have a certain mentality to get out there and run and get ahead of guys. The point of the stress course is to get guys doing routine uh, items that you might have to do when you go down on an IED event. Whether that's putting on the bomb suit, whether it's operating the robot, whether it's taking an x-ray to see what's inside a package, well, we want to go ahead and step that up a little bit because you need to be able to do these skills when you're tired, when you're cold, at night, all of these things. So they get down to the end and they're going through and they're trying to remember, was I supposed to pull this handle? Am I supposed to wait this long? Is it a 30 second or is it a one minute wait time? Should I go ahead and uh, put the suit on? Do I have this right piece on? Am I doing it fast enough? And so there's always that element of time along with it because we're pretty competitive. One of the biggest reasons why I keep re-enlisting is camaraderie. So we're getting rigged up. Um, we're running doubles, right? Double doors. It should be quick. Being with these guys, being able to uh, uh, know that they've been through the same training that I have. When put in a situation, they'll be able to, to handle it and uh, safely execute as the uh, training has provided us. It's that absolute trust and belief in the guys that are around you. And when you have that, it's not hard to jump out of that plane. It's not hard to go and dive because you fully believe that the planning has been done because no one would ever send one of their brothers or sisters into harm's way without doing the adequate planning and training and making sure that equipment's ready. That is really, to me, what exemplifies that EOD personality is that quiet professional that's just going to get the job done. They're not going to let you know how great they are and they're gonna move on to the next thing and just treat it as it's just another thing on my list. This is what you told me to do, so I did it, and I'm gonna go ahead and do the next thing.